Don't make the same mistake I made. If your first name, your middle name, or your last name is Lyndon, guess what? But there's just three numbers you need to remember. Three, four, and 10. There was one exhibit that left me speechless. I stood there numb. Before you visit the Lyndon Johnson Presidential Library Museum, you've got to watch this review. I'm going to cover everything you need to know. Parking, food, admission costs, exhibits, the gift shop, everything that'll help you make the most of your visit. Are you ready to go? Let's do it. The LBJ Presidential Library Museum is one of the oldest presidential libraries there are. It's over 50 years old. It's located in Austin, Texas, right there on the campus of the University of Texas. And it sits right beside the Texas Memorial Football Stadium. Don't make the same mistake I made when it comes to parking. When we first got there, I jumped at the first parking garage there on campus, the San Jacinto garage, but we had to cross the, feet, the street and between several buildings there on campus and walk up the hill to the museum. And there's a far easier way. In fact, there's free parking right next to the museum. Lot 38, look for it. It's right off of the Red River Street exit there beside the museum. It's about 250 feet from the museum. And there's also a wheelchair ramp that leads you right up to the museum. The LBJ Presidential Library is really, I think, one of the more affordable presidential museums. It's very reasonably cost. You know, LBJ's wishes were that as many people as possible could have access to the museum. And they've really made that available. There's half price Tuesdays. There's a lot of other days that you can see here that are listed as free admission days. If your first name, your middle name, or your last name is Lyndon, guess what? You get in for free. There's free Wi-Fi, you can take photographs, you can video, there's just no flash photography as you go around the museum. Please take note, there's no food service or a restaurant at the LBJ Library, but there are a variety of restaurants that you can drive to within about a mile radius of the museum. Let me tell you about the museum layout. I didn't find it the easiest to figure out at first, but there's just three numbers you need to remember. Three, four, and 10. Those are the three floors that all of the exhibits are on. The third floor is the ground floor where the admission desk is. There's a great intro video you need to check out on Lyndon Johnson, his life and his presidency. You take stairs from the third floor up to the fourth floor. And as you're taking those stairs up to the fourth floor, you come into what they call the Great Hall. You look up and you see about 45 million pages of documents in the library archives. The fifth floor through the ninth floor are the archives, just for researchers. But you look there and you go around the fourth floor it covers LBJ's life and politics. It has an exhibit on the Kennedy assassination, which I think was fascinating to see Lyndon Johnson behind the scenes there uh, preparing to take the oath of office. And there's an exhibit on the transition to power following the assassination. And then it just covers the LBJ presidency as a whole, his impact on the civil rights legislation of 64 and 65, which I think was one of the greatest contributions to Lyndon Johnson's presidency. It covers the great society, the space race, foreign policy, and then of course Vietnam, which really ended up being the greatest burden that Johnson had on him during his presidency. You take an uh, elevator from the fourth floor all the way up to the 10th floor, and the main exhibit in the 10th floor is the Oval Office replica. It's about 7 8 scale of the original uh, Oval Office, uh, and I have, they have it decorated up as Lyndon Johnson had it back during that time. The desk is original. It was They call it the Johnson desk. Uh, Johnson used it not only in the Senate, but also while he was vice president and also brought it into the Oval Office while he was president. The rocking chair you see in the room is original. The books that you see in the library there uh, in the Oval Office are original. The marble top table there with the built-in phone is original. Johnson was very famous for his use of the telephone. He used the phone all the time in calling congressmen a teletype 
machine is located in there. And he got a lot of information, updates from Vietnam while he was president. Then he has a console in there that has three television sets, which was for the three major television networks back at the time. And Johnson could sit at his desk and control the, the volume there uh, of whatever he wanted to hear specifically. I would highly recommend you go onto the website and check out the Oval Office exhibit. And they have a 360 degree view that you can take and you can get behind the desk, you can get close-ups of what's on the desk and other parts of the room, and you can read write-ups on it. And I would really highly suggest that you do that before you have that opportunity to step into that Oval Office and see those items. I would highly recommend you give yourself about an hour and a half to two hours to tour the museum, to really give yourself a sufficient amount of time to look over the exhibits. The exhibits are set up chronologically or topically. They have uh, some interactive of uh, exhibits set up. They've got a photo opportunity that you can have uh, with Lyndon Johnson there. Johnson was famous for the Johnson treatment where he would get in people's personal space, congressmen, as he was sort of working them over and, and trying to twist their arm about voting for legislation. And there's also these telephone conversation stations throughout the museum where you can pick up a phone and listen to LBJ uh, talking to a congressman or a cabinet member. If you're not comfortable with using those phones, you can take your cell phone and scan a QR code at each of the exhibits and listen to it just the same with your cell phone. There was one exhibit that left me speechless. I, I stood there numb. I went through a range of emotions. I was shocked, then I felt sad, and then I was just angry. It was the literacy test exhibit. As a history teacher, I taught my students about the Jim Crow laws and about poll taxes and the literacy test that southern states use to deny the vote to African Americans. And it's one thing to teach it, but it's another thing to look at one of those literacy tests up close. And the one they have on exhibit there is from the state of Mississippi. And it's got a lot of complicated wording and directions. Here you can see they ask the applicant to write out a portion of the Mississippi state constitution and give a reasonable explanation for it. And of course, obviously, if they didn't felt like that was reasonable, they would simply toss the application. Here's another section where you see they had to write out the duties and obligations of citizenship in a constitutional form of government. How many voters today could do that? This this exhibit grabbed me. It really made me appreciate the, the impact that Lyndon Johnson had in 64 and 65 with the civil rights legislation that was passed. Make sure as you're about ready to exit the museum there that you stop in at the museum store, the LBJ museum store there on the third floor. They have a, a, a wide variety of souvenirs that you can get from children all the way up to adults. And I would highly recommend that you check out their online website prior to visiting. There you can get an idea of budgeting and items uh, perhaps that you, you might want to uh, purchase. If you like what you watched today, hit the like button for us. Make sure you do us a favor and share our videos with your friends and family. If you want to become a part of our Press Politics family, hit the subscribe button now.